Good day ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Joy Steven. Welcome uh, to the uh, parents and grandparents meeting today and we're just going to talk about the uh, new CIC um, options uh, which is going to come up. Changes to the parents and grandparents program is likely to improve access to the application process. Until now, we have seen a first come first serve approach adopted by IRC or Immigration and Refugee, uh, Immigration, Refugee and Citizenship of Canada. However, in 2017, quotas are likely to be approached in a much different method of selection. This is how the process is likely to work. Uh, this is based on the information we have until now from IRC. Now, Canadian citizens and permanent residents who want to apply as sponsors of their parents or grandparents must express their interest by filing an online form. This can be done between January the 3rd and February the 2nd of 2017. You may not have access to the form after February the 2nd, therefore try to do this between the specified time period. This can be done between January 3rd, 2017 at noon uh, or 12 p.m. until noon, February the 2nd, 2017. The following information may be asked in the form and they are the individual's first name, the individual's family name, the uh, date of birth of the uh, individual, if you have any questions, you can just uh, post it on WebEx and then I will uh, respond to your questions as well. The country of birth, the main home address and the postal code. And also clearly, without a mistake, please input your email address. Once this information is submitted, the sponsor will get a confirmation email with a confirmation number. This confirmation number must be preserved as it must be treated like a lottery because IRCC will then randomly pick 10,000 applicants to apply and you may be one of the lucky ones. Those who are not picked this time may have the option to consider the same program in 2018. I think this throws, throws some clarity on the program, but now let us discuss what is required once you're actually picked, or in other words, you won the lottery. Okay, this section we will cover the following topics. What undertaking should you sign to obtain the sponsorship? Can you be a co-signer? And the third one is eligibility, the musts and must nots for this uh, sponsorship. It's a very important uh, aspect. Getting picked is one thing and then following through after that is something else. Okay, now let us visit the first point which, uh, which is a written undertaking that you have to provide to the Minister of Immigration. The undertaking is a promise to provide financial support and basic requirements for the family member you are trying to sponsor. Basic requirements are food, clothing, utilities, personal requirements for the sponsored individual, shelter and housing, fuel or in other words transportation, household supplies. This also includes other health care which is not provided by public health example or dentist care or eye care the undertaking ensures that these persons and their family members do not have to apply for social assistance in canada the length of the undertaking for sponsorship for parents and grandparents and their accompanying dependents is 20 years your obligations as a sponsor begin as soon as the um, person you are sponsoring and if applicable their dependents arrive in 
Canada. Please keep, the, keep this in mind. The undertaking is all an unconditional promise of support. This is something you need to understand. For example, the granting of Canadian citizenship or a divorce or a separation of or a relationship breakdown or moving or the um, sponsored individual moving to another province or moving away from the sponsor does not cancel the undertaking. The undertaking also maintains in effect even if your financial situation deteriorates. You must ensure the person or persons you are sponsoring does not depend on social assistance. And this is the uh, reasons for this uh, undertaking. Okay, now let's go and discuss the second point, which is if you can be a co-signer. Say for example, you individually may not, um, may not um, be able uh, to sponsor because of your financial circumstance, then would a co-signer also um, contribute to your application? And, and yes, your spouse or a common law pa partner may help you meet the income requirements by co-signing the sponsorship application. A common law partner is a person who is living with you in a conjugal relationship and has done so for at least one year prior to the signing of the undertaking. This is being recorded and you may watch this video um, at the Polensis page www.polensis.com slash pgp parents and grandparents so pgp the patient will be up this weekend so after monday you will be in a position to watch this video as well online the co-signer must meet the following conditions the co-signer must meet the same eligibility requirements as the sponsor the co-signer must agree to co-sign the under undertaking the co-signer must agree to be responsible for the basic requirements of the person you want to sponsor and his or her family members for the validity of the period of the undertaking the co-signer will be equally liable if obligations are not performed if your co-signer is a common law partner, then you must submit the statutory declaration of common law union, the IMM 5409. It's a form which is available on the um, uh, Immigration Canada website. You can also download it from uh, polincis.com slash PGP. Okay, now let's go and discuss the next point. Now let's actually discuss eligibility the musts and must nots for this sponsorship yeah if you have any questions please uh, wait until we fin i finish the first part and then we will come back to that those of you who are on webex you can just post your questions on webex and then i will respond them uh, respond to them at the end of, end of the session okay in order to sponsor you must be 18 years of age or older be a canadian citizen um, um, registered Indian uh, or permanent resident. Okay. The, uh, the third point is you must be sponsoring a member of the family class. In this instance, it must be your parent or your grandparent. The fourth point is that you must live in Canada. You cannot be living outside Canada and then trying to sponsor your um, uh, parents or grandparents. The fifth point is you must sign the undertaking promising to provide the basic requirements of the person being sponsored. The sixth point is you should sign an agreement with the person you are sponsoring that confirms that each of you understands your mutual obligations and responsibilities. The seventh point is you must prove that you have sufficient income to provide the basic requirements for your family members in Canada as well as uh, the persons included in your sponsorship undertaking. And you may also have a co-signer. Uh, you can get this, uh, the amount required from the website uh, polincis.com slash PGP uh, and um, uh, it's the lower income cutoff to be like Lyco. If you want to Google it, you will also find that there. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about 
ineligible to your people who cannot uh, participate in this program. You may not be able to sponsor um, a parent or a grandparent if you are one or in receipt of social assistance for a reason other than disability. Okay, number two, are in default of an undertaking. We will discuss these defaults at the end of this video. Um, um, so uh, we can discuss this later, but we, the second point also includes an immigration loan, a performance bond, or family support payments. Number three, you are uh, an undischarged bankrupt. Number four, you were convicted of an offense of a sexual nature, a violent criminal offense, an offense against a relative that results in bodily harm or an attempt to threat or to commit any such offenses depending on circumstances such as the nature of the offense, how long ago it occurred and whether a pardon was issued. Number five, you are under a removal order, then you cannot participate in it. Number six, you are detained in a penitentiary, jail or a reformatory or a prison. Okay, now let's, we just, uh, you know, did not talk about the defaults before. Now defaults also include if you are not, you are not eligible to sponsor if you are in default of a previous undertaking. If you are in default and you submit an application to sponsor, you will be refused and the sponsorship fees that you have paid will not be refunded or applied to subsequent sponsorship applications. These are the type of defaults you may have encountered, may, mostly not. If you are in default of a previous undertaking, relatives you have sponsored in the past received social assistance or welfare while the undertaking was valid. You may not sponsor until you repay the full amount of the social assistance or welfare payment or repay the debt to the satisfaction of the government authority that issued the benefit or ordered you to pay. Number two, if you have a immigration loan, you will not be eligible to participate in this program. You may have received a transportation assistance or right of uh, permanent residence fee. It is previously called the landing fee for permanent residence. Uh, and if that is not being paid uh, or if that is a loan and you have missed payments or you are in arrears, you may not sponsor until you pay all those arrears on your loan. For more information, contact the collection services of revenue, I mean, uh, of uh, in Canada, 1 800. 667-7301 and this is the number which is provided at the uh, immigration uh, website. Okay, number four, you will not be el eligible if you have support payment obligations. If you were ordered by a court to make support payments to a spouse or child and have neglected to do so, you may not sponsor until you resolve the family support matter. Okay, number four, you may not be eligible for this program if you have a performance bond. You agreed to pay money to guarantee that an immigrant would fulfill his or her obligations under immigration legislation. You may not sponsor until you pay the full amount of the law. Okay, um, yeah, just send your, uh, keep your questions to you. I'll just come back to you after this. Okay, I hope this video was of assistance to you. Paulinsis deals with all types of immigration is issues. If you want to be represented once you are picked, please contact our offices. Family sponsorships are simple and straightforward and may not require a representation. However, we are here to assist those who need help for a fee. Feel free to use the free resource of this program which will be posted at www.polensis.com slash pgp. We have the forms there. Um, I'm, I'm talking about the um, uh, forms which are required after you're picked. Okay, the forms, uh, the online forms uh, which will be open uh, will be at the um, uh, uh, IRC website. Uh, you know, if you want to, we will post this also whenever it is available so that it will direct you to the right place. If you have any questions, uh, you may now ask me, uh, but uh, for this video's sake, 
Adios. Thank you.